Hello. Um, my name's Sarah and I am one half of Two Pearls in a Pod, which is a podcast I do with uh, my friend Paige. Um, she is busy studying for exams um, and because I have a lot of free time or more free time than her at the moment, I wanted to um, do something new today. I am thinking about starting a project vlog. Um, it's not something I've done before, but this is a project that I've been thinking about for a while and there's a few things that I've not done before. So I think it would be a good thing to document for posterity. Um, and hopefully maybe some people find something useful or interesting in it um, and can do the same. Um, this kind of sort of aligned really nicely. So the project I want to make is the the Tobler Toffler socks, or slipper socks um, from Satin Scarn. Um, I have seen Inga from Knitting Traditions make multiple pairs for her family. They look really cute and cosy and um, it's something that I want to try. I would love to be able to try to felt and make these sort of cosy home sock, slipper sock type things. Um, and then, so I kind of had it in the back of my mind that it would be a good project to try. And then I wanted to buy a book from Sadness Garn, but to buy it, you had to buy some yarn. So this is the book I bought, which is called Soft for Women, Mick Till Gum. Um, but the rules with Sadness Garn is you have to buy five balls of yarn when you buy a magazine. And so I on the website that I bought it from, they were, I was kind of looking and there wasn't anything in particular that I wanted to buy from Samuskan at the time, but I noticed that they were selling this yarn, which is called uh, Frittiskan, which is a um, bulky weight wool, 100% um, wool from Norway. And this is the yarn that is used in the pattern for the Tobler Toffler socks. The pattern itself is free, but it's only in Norwegian. Fortunately, Inga from Knitting Traditions has done a verbal translation. It's in episode 21 or 22 or like early 20s. I'll check. But she's done a verbal translation in terms of uh, translating a free pattern. And I am going to, well, I, I have started to make this pattern based on the free pattern that's available in Norwegian plus Inga's translation. I mean, I presume given it's free, there's no limitation on like writing down what I do too, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what the rules are there. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be a good thing to, I mean, the process of these socks is you felt them up. So you knit them and then felt them and it's, um, and so they shrink a lot and get felted and cozy. Um, so I'm going to make a pair for myself and if all goes to plan, like if they, if they go well, then probably the entire of my family will be getting a pair eventually because they, they look cozy. Um, they're a little bit unusual in how they're knitted up because um, of the way that you kind of felt them, but I've done one. And so I thought I would kind of vlog making the second one and then the felting process. And hopefully at the end, I'll be like, wow, look at my socks. But anyway, so this is the first one that I've made. So you make two. Um, so this, this turns into one sock because sort of one of these legs will go inside the other. And then this is your toes and this is the end, but it's doubly thick. So it's doubly cozy, I suppose. Um, but yeah, so this is how it's knitted. I'm going to start casting on for the second one and show you kind of how I start at this top point. Um, come down to this gap and then knit these individually. And once we have two, I'm going to document the felting process. It's nev I've never done it before, so maybe it's super easy and everyone's like, this is not a big deal. Like, why are you videoing this? But it's new for me, so we'll see. Um, that's the plan. We'll see how things go. Um, I think probably the thing that took me the longest to get my head around was like uh, the the direction and kind of the order in which you sort of do things. I mean, obviously now I hold it up, but um, that was probably the bit that was most 
uh, unclear with the information I had available. So I'm going to kind of explain how I got to the point that I have as I go with the second one. The first and most uh, notable departure from the pattern that I've made is in the cast on. So in the cast on, it gets you to uh, just cast on however many stitches you need, like um, in total, um, and then you start knitting in a tube. But there was a few people I could tell from Ravelry had done a Judy's Magic cast on, or a, I learnt a new one, it's called like a Turkish cast on, which I, I think is probably to the same, if, same effect as Judy's Magic cast on in that you get this seamless join. So I did that, which just means it's one less thing to seam up at the end and it looks really neat. Um, so I hope that works. I mean, it's a bold move to start playing with a pattern before you've even uh, knitted it or know know what it know, know how it's meant to be constructed but I think it'll be okay if not I could just cut it but I think it'll be okay so let's cast on the second one and I'll check in once I have got that established also it's I thought I should mention uh, I'm wearing my Sailor Swift tank by Kuta Vakika um, the weather's been really really beautiful here and um, the sun's shining and so yeah it's only September but I'm wearing my summer knits and it's good to get some mileage out of it so soon. Okay so the way the sock is kind of made up and the direction in which you work is you start at the bottom here and you cast on however many number of stitches the pattern says. Um, you can do that in um, just a plain cast on or you can do a Judy's Magic cast on um, but either way you join in the round and then you just work straight for um, however many rounds the pattern suggests for me I think it was a 29 um, until you get to this point where you sort of essentially divide for each layer of the front part of the foot um, so at this point you will put half the stitches on hold um, and then cast on extra so many stitches um, mine was six I think and you just work exclusively on one part of the foot again in the round and then you cast off sort of as you would for a normal sock toe once you've done that you go back to the other stitches that you had left on hold and essentially do the exact same thing picking up and knitting those extra stitches that you cast on in the middle and casting that toe off the same Hopefully that makes sense. So it's such a beautiful day. I am sitting in my garden and I'm working on my second sock. Um, so I thought I'd show you where I'm up to. I caught up with some friends this morning, um, both of whom are just learning to knit. So it was nice to sit and we had like a little morning picnic and worked on some knitting. Um, so this is the second of my slipper socks. I, as you can see, I've cast on using Judy's Magic Cast On in the middle there. Um, and now I'm just working um, straight. I've never actually done Judy's Magic Cast On where you don't increase at the edges, so like for socks and things. Um, so it's kind of weird just, just going straight after doing the cast on, but it's a beautiful effect. It's really nice. Um, I feel like it's the sort of thing if you're gonna knit like, um, like a, like computer sleeves or iPad sleeves or something, it's a perfect shape because it would just, it makes a perfect rectangular base of something. So yeah. Um, but yeah, you've really, I feel like I've really got to pull that first stitch around to keep that tension uh, okay at this end here. The satisfying thing about this is knowing that because it's going to be felted, you don't need to be as perfect with it. Like uh, when I was knitting the first one, knitting it so that the you know the decreases like as long as it kind of worked out and it was approximately the right shape I think is fine because I think any detail is going to be lost in the uh in the felting process anyway so you don't have to be as particular with your knitting uh, which is liberating anyway I'm gonna work a little bit more on this it's quite hard on the hands I think mainly maybe because of the the circular nature of it um but I'm finding I'm having to take little breaks and do something else um, just because of the strain it's putting uh, on my hands. But 
it's chunky so it doesn't matter it knits up so quick Okay, so I've just had to rip back, back a bit because I over overshot um, and had gone too far, which I actually did with the first sock as well, um, stupidly. But it is just so easy once you get established and it's in the round for it to be like for you to just go and go and go with the chunky yarn. Um, <clears throat> early on, if you do the Judy's Magic cast on, this first little bit can be a bit awkward because it's kind of a back and front rather than a circle. So I found that I was kind of having to pull the needle through a bit. But once you've got a little bit of body going, it becomes more like a tube. Um, it is easier to sort of knit circular. So I'm now at a point where I'm going to divide for the two feet. So I'm going to pop half of these stitches on hold and half of these ones because our center point wants to be halfway like our center point and where we do the two feet is going to be from here so from this middle point i'll put half on hold and that's when i'll that's and then in this same center point is where i'll um, cast on the extra additional stitches to start knitting the first um the, the first foot bit so yeah okay this is what this now looks like um the stitches for this half are on hold and I've just picked up some stitches in the middle between and these ones are going to be the ones that I now work on. There's a little bit of shaping in this corner and I need to put some uh, stitch markers in here to help uh, remember that shaping but I'm going to now work on the first foot. Okay I've done my two decreases, um, the two decreases that you do on rounds 6 and 11. I don't know if you can see them here but that's the reason you have the two Oops. Um, that's the reason you have the two stitch markers. Now that I've decreased those four stitches, I'm going to put the stitch marker in the middle and just knit straight for 24 rounds. Okay, so I've done the um, all the work up from the two sort of shaping stitches that I did. Um, so I've done my 24 rows and I'm ready to shape for the toe. And this is a toe you would do just as you would a normal sock. Um, the key thing to remember is to make sure that you put the shaping of your toes um, as as the as the sock sits. So making sure that you're decreasing here and here rather than here and here, um, because um, if we look on this one, um, you want it sort of facing this way because the sock's going to sit like this, and that's going to be. The top of your foot and the first time I did it I did it so that the shaping was here and here and, and that's uh doesn't really work out um so yeah making sure that you've got the top of the foot and the bottom of the foot oriented as it will be and just doing um the sort of a standard decrease at each side um on the top and bottom every I think it's every second row um, until you get to the point where you just pull the stitches through. Um, so I'm going to do that one now. Okay, so I have um, finished the first toe edge with these um, shaping uh, decreases at the toe here. And then you just pull the last, um, the final stitches through. I think it's eight for all sizes. Um, and then weave that end in or kind of just stuff it in because it's all going to get felted. And then I have um, started the second part of the front foot. I've picked up um, the extra cast on six stitches in the middle there. And now I'm basically going to do the same thing. It's got some decreases early on and then you knit straight and then you do the toe again. Cool. Okay, welcome to my bathroom. Um, we are finished. I've got my two socks ready to go. Um, and today's the day I'm going to... I'm going to have felt them in the machine this morning. Um, we are now entering a period of great uncertainty. I have been watching a few YouTube videos and reading a few things online about what's best. 
Um, and so I have some towels to put in with them to create more surface to increase the friction, which is what's going to be causing the felting. I think I always thought it was the temperature, but I, from what I can read, it's actually just um, the fibres rubbing against other fibres. Um, and then I've got some, I mean, I was just going to use laundry liquid. Um, Arne and Carlos use something that, of course, you can only get in Norway, but I'm just, I presume it's some sort of like generic wool wash, not something that's like gentle and woolly and soft, but just standard. Um, and we'll see what happens. So let's do it. I'm going to chuck all of these things in. Good luck, my friends. And two towels. Oh, moment of truth. Okay. Oh, I didn't um, I didn't put these on to spin. So, ta ta da! It's definitely shrunk. It's definitely fuzzy and starting to felt. Um, you definitely could do with a bit more. You can still see some of that stitch definition. So I'm gonna run it again for another thirty minute cycle, and see what we end up with. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay, second felting. Again, we're getting, it's getting even fuzzier. Um, but I'd say it's still, well, probably not that much further off what it needs to be actually. I don't know. Um, I think I'm gonna do one more. We'll see what happens. This thing where to help shape it once they, the socks were done um she would kind of put them on and then put socks over the top to really mold the shape so that's what i've done here they've been on for about half an hour they're getting a little like uncomfy oh god sorry but <laughs> um this is what my socks are looking like so yeah they are um they're still a little bit damp, so they feel a little bit weird. But um, yeah, I've been trying to do that. <sighs> the one thing that I am like not 100% sure about in terms of fit and everything is uh, I would have liked them to come up a little bit further closer to my ankle. And they're a little bit gapy at the sides here. Um, when they were more warm, I mean more wet, I was kind of there's still scope to shape them a little bit, which is the great thing about felting, I suppose, is that you can, you've still got a little bit of shaping. I'm not sure what's going to be the best thing, given I've got this um, gappiness at the back. But overall, oh my gosh, <laughs> they feel so good. <laughs> um, they've got, um, they're getting some really nice shape um, over the arch of my foot and around my toes. And um, yeah, overall, <laughs> I'm so wrapped. <laughs> they're so cozy. So they're done. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I can't keep, I can't stop smiling because I love them so much. Um, they're, these are my felted slipper socks. Um, I am a, I wear, usually have a size EU 42 foot shoe i made the second larger size in the pattern and i ended up using essentially exactly four balls of yarn of the fricked it's gone i've got one left over um but in i wasn't willing to take that risk when i was or shipping internationally to get this yarn so that's fine but for a a 42 shoe size four balls should do you to get one pair of slipper socks um, I'm so happy with how these turned out. I'm so happy with the learning experience and the process of felting, which was really fun. Um, I'm really glad that I tried something new. I think it's good for me to keep experimenting with new crafts, new things. Um, so yeah, uh, the one thing I would ch 
change or like the one thing that I'm sort of kind of mindful of is the foot opening is maybe a bit wide for my liking and the front foot is maybe a little bit short. So what in future I might do if, if I was to knit these again for myself would be to make that point where I divide for the front toe sections, the front foot sections, a little bit earlier. Um, but in the scheme of things, I'm so happy with them. I started felting them like flat, not sort of in, assembled in their final form, which I think was good initially with like the first two rounds of felting because I ultimately did maybe four 30 minute cycles because I was too nervous to do anything longer without checking on them. And so I think initially maybe it was useful to have them untucked, like just um, hanging out. Uh, the way that you've knitted them but I think as they got stiffer and thicker being at being forcing one part of the foot inside the other would have got really difficult so I'm glad that I did do that and put them into their final shape for the felting when I did I think if you kind of got all the way to the size you were happy with and then tried to turn them inside it would have been really awkward and and part of actually one of the challenges I've had is um, trying to smooth out the inside of the toe because it gets a little bit lumpy in there. Um, so I would say, I don't know what the, I don't know how you meant to do it, but I started with it open and then I finished with it tucked in. And I think that was a good call. But again, if anyone's done these before and has better, uh, more insight into kind of the fight, like the specifics of how to do the, the felting, Please let me know. Just look at the shape of them. Oh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm so happy. Anyway, um, I, this was by no means a tutorial. I just wanted to take you along as I did something new. Um, if I, hopefully you found that useful. Hopefully some people get something out of it. Uh, if they, and you know, are now feeling emboldened to make their own uh felted slipper socks um especially as it's getting into cozy season in the northern hemisphere it's cozy season for me all year round um but uh if you yeah let me know what you think if you have any questions i'll try and answer them I, i'm not trying to i'm not by no means an authority on these i think the authority is absolutely inga but um yeah let me know what you think if there's anything i can try and answer i will do so um but yeah um yeah. Um, thanks again for watching. I'm about to head around to pages actually, and we're just going to hang out and um, enjoy some sunshine and some knitting together. So yeah, see you next time.